Hello and welcome to this film about empirical formulae from combustion data. Should have been um, one of the films about year 12 calculations, um, but I forgot about it at the time. So this should be the fifth in that series. As it is, it's a little bonus. Okay, and by the end of this film, hopefully you'll see how we can see how much of each element there is in a substance by burning it, okay, by combusting it, and you'll turn the empirical formula into a molecular formula using the formula PV equals NRT. Okay, now some people prefer not to actually figure out what to do when they're doing calculations. They prefer to just follow a kind of recipe. So if you're one of those people, try and remember that the number of moles of carbon will always be given to you by the number of moles of carbon dioxide. That's because there's one carbon atom in carbon dioxide. Okay, The number of moles of hydrogen will be given to you by doubling the number of moles of water. And the reason for that is because there's two hydrogen atoms in a water molecule. Okay. Also remember, and this is really important, you can't use directly these quantities to find the number of moles of oxygen. So you can't add these oxygen atoms to these oxygen atoms to find how many oxygen atoms you had in your substance. Okay, You're going to need to find that a different way, and we'll see what that is in just a minute. Here is our example calculation. Okay, We're trying to find the formula of a compound. It consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We've burned it. We've made some carbon dioxide and water. And then we vaporize a sample, and we try to find its molecular formula from the data we're given. Okay? Now, the empirical formula part, just remember, we are always trying to do, in an empirical formula, we're trying to kind of get a number of moles and then turn that into a ratio and then plug those numbers into a formula. Okay? And that is exactly what we're going to do here. But, we can't, um, but we, what we're going to have to do is use the carbon dioxide and the water to find the number of moles of carbon and hydrogen. So let's just go ahead and do that. The number of moles of carbon, as we've just discussed in the previous slide, was the same as the number of moles of carbon dioxide. That's given by its mass divided by its molar mass, and that is 0.968 over 44.01, and that is 0 0.0220 moles. Okay, the number of moles of hydrogen, well, that's equal to twice the number of moles of water. Okay, so doubling the number of moles of water is going to give us the number of moles of hydrogen. So that's two times the mass over the molar mass, which is two times 0.594 over 18.016, and that equals 0.0659 moles. Okay, so I've got two of the numbers of moles that I need, but remember I can't just add up the oxygens here and find the number of moles of oxygen. Why not? Well, because the oxygen in these substances came mainly from the air that we burn the stuff in. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do next is to find the mass of oxygen by finding the mass of carbon and hydrogen and subtracting them from this mass. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the mass of these two elements. The mass of carbon is 0.0220 multiplied by 12.01 and the mass of hydrogen that's 0 0.0659 multiplied by 1.008 because the mass is n times big M okay so what are those two quantities uh, one is 0.264 grams and the other one is 0 0.0665 grams and if you add those two up, you get 0.331 grams. Okay, so the mass of those two elements is 0.331 grams. The mass of oxygen in this sample must be, the mass of oxygen is 0.682 minus 0.331. And that equals 0.351 grams. And now I can find the number of moles of oxygen because I know that the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. So 0.351 over 16 and that equals 0 0.0220 moles. Okay, so here we are. We've got three molar quantities for our three elements. Let's go ahead and put those quantities into a table so that we can find the formula. Okay, here we go carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We had 0.0220 of that. We had 0.0659 of that, which is basically 0.0660, 
right and 0 0.0220 of that so 1 to 3 to 1 if you can't do that in your head just use your calculator divide them all by 0 0.0220 and that gives us an empirical formula of CH3O okay now what we've got to try and do is turn this empirical formula that we found here into a molecular formula and we're going to use this volume temperature and pressure data to do a PV equals NRT calculation Remember, what we need to do to find the molecular formula is find the molar mass. Well, let's think about what the formula for molar mass is, first of all, okay? Molar mass is equal to mass divided by number of moles, okay, grams per mole, okay? So if I'm trying to find the molar mass, I'm going to divide the mass by the number of moles, okay? But let's remember that PV equals NRT, and so therefore N equals PV on RT. Okay, so if we're taking the molar mass as equal to mass divided by N, that's equal to the mass divided by PV on RT. Or in other words, it's equal to the mass times RT on PV. Okay, so if we find the mass times R times T, Divide that by PV, we'll have the molar mass, and we can go ahead and find our molecular formula. Okay, so what's the mass? Well, the mass is our sample that we vaporize, so that's point, so the molar mass equals 0 0.774 744, multiplied by 8.314, that's the gas constant from our data sheet. Temperature was 200 degrees centigrade, so that is 473.15 Kelvin because we add 273.15 to our degree centigrade, divided by the pressure, 95, multiplied by the volume, 0.497, because this is in milliliters and not liters. Okay, and if you plug those numbers into your calculator, you get about 61.98. Now remember, our empirical formula was, uh, let's do it down here, CH3O. That has a mass of 12, plus 3 plus 16 which is about 31 okay to the nearest whole number okay this thing here divided by 31 is roughly equal to 2 okay so our molecular formula must be twice as big as our empirical formula so it must be C2H6O2 okay so there we are we found the molecular formula using PV equals NRT we found the empirical formula from combustion data. As you know, with calculations, the best thing to do to get good at them is to practice them. Um, so good luck with that. And let me know if you're having any difficulties or comment on the film.